you propose. Today we continue our series on Hawaii County's waste to energy endeavor. Yesterday we featured an introductory look at Mayor Billy Kanoi's thorough presentation to the Hawaii County Council's Committee on Environmental Management. Today we take a closer look at the mayor's reasoning why the current approach will succeed where a similar approach to the solid waste problem failed five years ago. The council voted down the wheel Brader waste to energy proposal in 2008. So what's different from this than the old? Number one was experience. We wanted to see, show us your experience. Um, number two is the last proposal just looked at waste to energy, anaerobic digestion, and gasification. We want to cast a wide net and explore all options uh, for waste reduction technology. Um, financing. The last proposal was just a public financing. We looked at the County of Hawaii to finance the operation. In this proposal, we want to also explore private financing uh, to minimize cost, risk to the County of Hawaii. You propose how you will build it and how you will finance this project. Qualifications. In the last uh, go around, they only asked for two years of experience. This time around, we're looking for three years of experience. Uh, and also volume. In the last contract, they looked at Hawaii County doing a 233-ton project. We want to explore up to a 300-ton um, project believing that the greater tonnage will um, provide Hawaii County greater flexibility and perhaps by economy of scale, a more favorable cost-effective project. Now, how would we get to 300 tons here in East Hawaii? Well, currently we have 22 transfer stations. You know, some going to Puanahulu, some going to Hilo. Now, from Lapoi Hoi, all the way to Hawaiian Ocean View Estates goes to Puanahulu. So that's Lapoi Hoi, Pauwilo, Honoka, Waimea, Havi, Puako, right? Down to Kealakehi, Keaho, Kee, Waiea, Miloli, Hawaiian Ocean View. What we would do, proposed to do, is reverse that. Just a couple stations. Pahala and Waiohino would be brought to East Hawaii. Lapoi Hoi, Pawilo, Honoka, Waimea would reverse. Instead of going to Puanahulu, they would come back to Hilo. And that's considering that Honoka and Waimea are seven-day-a-week stations. These are not three-day-a-week transfer stations. So in preliminary discussions, looking at tonnage, that would reverse that. And I know Waimea has concerns in terms of what is the impact of doing that on our communities. And the impact would be instead of Lapoi Hoi, Pawilo, Honoka going through Waimea, you'd only have Waimea coming back. So we'd actually minimize our impact on Waimea and North Hawaii. And uh, Pahala and Waiohino coming to East Hawaii should give us that capacity. Councilwoman Brenda Ford, who was on the council when the last waste to energy project was voted down, had a few questions for the mayor about the latest plan. The last time we went through this, shall I call it an ordeal? <laughs> last time we went through this, one of the issues that came up was there's kind of a, a rule of thumb. Now this is several years ago, things have changed, but the rule of thumb was unless you had approximately 500 tons of combustibles, not scrap metal that doesn't burn and make anything. You know, putting aside our green waste and our, our plastic recyclables and scrap metal, you still needed a rule of thumb, 500 tons of combustibles to do this. Right. I don't know that we're there. At that, you know, based on our tonnage right now, uh, we're not there. We were surprised at the extensive list of smaller municipalities who have waste reduction technologies in the 100 ton, 200 ton, and 300 ton ranges. So we'll be happy to provide that to you. It, it ranged from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, Vermont, Canada, um, and around the country of similar sized municipalities like us, us who have implemented 
waste reduction technology on a much smaller scale over a pretty significant period of time, some going back to the late 90s, early 2000s. That, that really truly puts my mind um, yeah. uh, more at ease because, you know, we, it, was a not, it was a slugfest the last time over that yeah. issue. Ford also recalled concerns from the labor workforce in the last go-round. I know that the last time there was a kind of a little bit of a hiccup over our union people going to be lose their jobs? Are we going to be hiring more union people? Is the plant going to be unionized? I mean, there was, because it's on county property and it is um, a government partnership with a private entity. So could you address for us any issues that you anticipate or are going to eliminate as a problem regarding our unions? Sure. First of all, no union employees will be losing their jobs. All of our county employees are secure. Um, represented by our United Public Workers. Uh, we'll certainly meet and have a conversation with all involved, interested parties. Um, but that's where we're at right now, where anybody shouldn't have a concern that their jobs are at risk, because they're not. Uh, we wouldn't allow it to be. Um, anything going forward, clearly at this point, is speculative. And, um, you know, the bottom line is, we're going to make sure, as we've always done in the past, to be fair. Uh, to everybody involved, and uh, we'll make sure we protect everybody's interests and that at the end of the day, everybody feels very comfortable that it's a fair, equitable process and ultimately everybody's protected and ensured uh, going forward that they're treated fairly.